I'm JM, this is Alan. We're here to talk about tracing and Argo workflows. Uh, this will highlight work that Alan has done, we're introducing tracing into his workflows, and a lot of work he's done in 3.6, and he'll talk more about that in later slides. I'm a senior software engineer at GitHub. He's a staff software engineer at Pipekit. We're going to talk about in untangling the threads, aka understanding what is going on in your Argo workflows with uh, open telemetry tracing. We assume you have Argo workflows knowledge, but you may not have any knowledge about tracing, so we're gonna describe that a little bit. So trace consists of spans, one or more spans. Spans start and stop in time, aka they have a start time and a stop time. Spans can have child scopes, as many as possible, and spans can have attributes. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, the image on the right shows uh, what a trace looks like with a, bu a bunch of spans. So we have the parent span A, and then the children spans B, C, D, and E. C and D are children of B, but see that they stay inside the time span of B. Um, also, you can grab a, a single point in time on a span, and that's called an event. For our architecture, we're going to use open telemetry recommended architecture. This means we will use Open Telemetry Collector, which allows any number of applications to route their Open Telemetry data to one or more stores. In, in our case, we will use we will route some data to a trace store and a metric store. Specifically, we are going to use send traces from the workflow controller and the pods the workflow generates into an Open Telemetry Collector right there in the middle, the orange box. We will be using the Grafana stack for our trace store and metric store. For trace store, we're going to use Tempo, and for metrics, we're going to use uh, Prometheus. Then your Grafana is going to be used to query those stores to visualize that information. The collector could be set up as a daemon set or sidecars, keeping the collector close to your pods. The setup architecture is very, very flexible. In order to make the architecture work, we're going to use the open telemetry operator. The operator um, creates the open telemetry collector and sets up its config, and then it also um, annotates the workflow controller and the pods created in the workflows. It will also provide the environment variables, so all that information can help the applications route their data to the collector, and then the collector will populate the stores. <coughs> As we're all workflows users, you may have noticed the timeline view icon on the top right of your workflow. When you click that, you get to see something that looks like a trace with a bunch of spans. On the x-axis, we have time. On the y-axis, we have the steps. What this workflow trace looks like is from the examples DAG diamond from the examples folder in the Argo workflows repository. We have four tasks or pods, A, B, C, and D. B and C are dependent on A, so they wait until A finishes, then they run in parallel, and then D is dependent on C and, uh, B and C, so then it runs. In this case, we can see that uh, C ran just a little bit faster. As stated previously, this is kind of like a high-level trace. This is also the view inside of uh, Grafana. So this is a more detailed view. We have the over, overall workflow run, at the top, and then we have the groupings. Again, overall workflow at the top, A is in the top left, B and C are interleaved in the middle because they ran in parallel, and D is in the bottom right. I know that's a really small image, but there are orange lines in the middle of B and C, and we'll explain those in a second. So if we focus down in Grafana and filter down to just the pods, A, B, C, and D, this is what we would see. A runs first, B and C run in the middle, and D at the end. So what are all of these other bars that are compressed at the top of the image? What else can we do with this tool? In our DAG diamond, we slightly edited it and used a tool called the OTEL CLI. This allows us to add tracing to where we normally couldn't get tracing. So the CLI produces a span using the OTEL protocol for commands, any old command. 
In this case, we had a little fun with the naming. We have three commands, ArgoCon, Party, and Sleep. That's the order of process every day here at the conference, right? So the first one, we sleep for five seconds. The second one, we randomly party based on how tired you are after the conference, and then you sleep for eight seconds at the end. And what this gives us is it produces the spans and puts them through the collector into the stores and get, lets you visualize them in Grafana. This is an example of easily adding tracing to your active workflows right now. You do need the collector in place to get the data to the stores so that you can query them with Grafana, but this is a really nice little tool. Specifically, if we focus down on the party span, we automatically out of the box get a bunch of attributes from the hotel CLI. Process command, command arguments, process owner, process IDs. The level of detail might be good to run occasionally, but you wouldn't want to run it all the time. At this point, I'm going to hand the presentation off to Alan. Thank you. You might want, not want to run this all the time because it's going to cost you quite a lot to store all of this data for every single workflow that you run. Um, Welcome to any uh, members of the Datadog community around that uh, will be profiting off this. Uh, if you could just send us some cake afterwards, that would be brilliant. Um, so what else can we do with this? Um, here we've got the very top of that span that JM showed you. Um, and in there, we've got two sections which are labeled as workflow phase. Might be hard to see, depending on how far you're back you're sitting. Um, but basically, at the beginning, we've got a one second um, bar followed by a one minute, 20 second bar. Um, and what's happening there, if we dig down into those, we can see that the phase of the workflow started off in pending, has circled. So this is one of the attributes of that span. So you can add attributes into spans. This one saying we were pending followed by running. So our workflow ran, was pending for a little while, um, and then it ran quite Quickly, in one minute 20, that's, that seems reasonable for this workflow. Um, so to make this worse, I um, set our workflow controller to only be allowed to run two workflows at once and then ran a whole bunch of these at the same time. And then I've got an unhappy user and um, his workflow took seven minutes and he doesn't know why. He can go in and look at the trace and see that it was pending for nearly six minutes of this. Um, so there's a way of visualizing why things, is, things aren't working very well. Perhaps your users will be able to, or your, the workflow designers will be able to see this. You can see all the action in the little compressed view in the top right-hand corner there um, happens on the right-hand end of this. So it's pending for a long time before it starts running. Um, so we've got a, a state in our workflow that we're interested in. It's, we don't like it if workflows spend a long time impending, perhaps. So how can we get that out? Um, so I'm going to introduce you to a couple more open telemetry concepts. Um, inside our open telemetry collector, there are pipelines. And the pipeline takes the um, metrics in and delivers the metrics out. And, um, and it takes the tracing in and delivers tracing out. That would be normally how you would use the collector. It can take tracing from one type of protocol and deliver it in a different type of protocol, but your pipelines have to be of the same type. But OpenTelemetry guys, they're fabulous, have this idea called connectors, and this one is called the Span Metrics Collector. Connector. Um, if you can guess what it does um, <laughs> from its name, it converts spans into metrics. So in this case, it will take the span information, how long did the span run for, and store that as a metric. So that's the pending span that ran for seven, six minutes, sorry, um, it will be stored as a metric going up over time. And um, we can then use metric type technology on looking at this. Um, we want to store the phase, so I've told the connector that we want to store the phase as one of the dimensions of our new metrics. Um, but you can use this to, I'm, gonna, I'm just demonstrating it here with pending, you could use this on anything, like how long do people party for. Um, we can graph that in Grafana, we, could, we can see here, this is my run where the last ones were taking seven minutes, and over a period of only a few minutes, our, our, the amount of seconds our workflows have spent in pending has gone up rapidly, we could create 
um, alerts based on that, and um, we could then figure out whether we want to fix our cluster, whether we want to make it bigger, make the parallelism limit higher, something like that. You can do this with metric, normal metrics already. This is just an example of how you might use it with spans uh, to get data out of things that you don't have metrics for. And do the same sort of thing for pending pods. This is a new metric in um, Workflow 3.6, which we're hoping to release this week. Um, you can get a metric out saying, how long am I sp pods spending in image pull back off in this case, because I've given it a completely made up image to run. Over to you. Moving into something a little more concrete, my personal experience with Argo for workflows was mainly CI on a previous project. Um, and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of tooling that has tracing support built in. One example is BuildKit. So we realized that it's great if you have a workspace for your CI. So again, you have a feature branch. You want to run your CI. So the go code gets checked out. You manipulate it. It goes to a workspace. It's used by the next step. We couldn't do that. We had a massive monolith. So we actually decided to use containers as artifacts between the steps. And one nice thing that I learned from Alan is that BuildKit does have tracing. Um, and he's going to show you on the next slide what that's like. But what we did is we actually built a feature branch, built an image, and that image was passed as an artifact between the steps. It was actually a lot faster than dealing with a network volume or doing read writes to any file system. Um, and it just depends on how you have your system set up, how big your repository is. And we would daily recreate our base image on main so that the diff was only 24 hours, so it wasn't too painful. And that allowed us to work really fast CI workflows. So for this example, we're going to do a checkout of the Argo Workflows code, um, just as an example, in, t in one pod, in one node in our workflow, we're going to put it into a uh, min.io S3 store as an artifact um, in the local cluster, so it's going to be pretty quick, and then we're going to pull it back out and we're going to build the Argo UI using BuildKit. Um, so that's the DAG on the right there. Um, Here's the build kit output, or some of it. It produces a huge amount of tracing. Um, I'm highlighting a few bits of it. I don't know whether you can read the stuff on the left. That looks a lot like what you would get from running Docker build. Um, it's got the different containers that it's building. The Argo UI is a multi-stage Docker file doing multi-stage building. You can see in our tracing beautifully that those uh, multi-stage build steps are happening in parallel. We can take that information and maybe make our build step faster by parallelizing more. We can understand where the critical path through our build step is. This is all build kit stuff, nothing I did really, but we can now graph this within the whole of our workflows view. Um, pick out the, the critical path for which, which path to optimize based on, well, this one doesn't run super optimally, but that one down there is much more important to fix. We get loads more information out of exporting the layers, sending them off to our Docker repo. So if our Docker repo is super slow, we'll know that information here again from the spans showing how long those uploads are taking. Um, we get more detailed information. Um, we get the shards of the different layers. Um, and all of this stuff is all in one big span, one big trace that you can then go to from your workflow and start analyzing, which is why I think it's super cool. Um, here we've got the span for just one of the builds. At the top of the page is the brown bar. Um, this is one of the layer builds. At the bottom, we've got a bunch of events. So I'm going to, this is where we introduce events in. They're the little black lines, if you can see them in the brown bar at the top. <laughs> it's really hard to get these images big enough. And down the bottom, we've got some time information for this. So this overall step took um, a few seconds. And you can see it finishes the last bit of the container exiting. is slightly before the end of the span, the last bar in that. Um, I don't know what it does for the remaining time. Um, interesting, maybe if that's critical to you, you can start optimizing it. What we can look at, slightly more detail, uh, we were transferring a Git repo in a S3 bucket um, around. Um, so our first step loads artifacts in almost no time at all, 13 microseconds, because it hasn't got any artifacts to load. Um, it saves artifacts off, so this is saving the entirety of the Argo Workflows repo. 
in 266 milliseconds. Seems reasonable. Uh, it takes quite a lot longer, nearly three times as long to load the artifacts. That's curious. I don't fully understand why. Um, maybe we're just saved by the buffer cache in the save artifacts, but usually compression takes longer than decompression. Another thing to investigate. And we're starting to get into the realms of this is more SRE type work than workflow developer work. And this is where you can start to hand off data and information between the two groups of people, especially if you like to keep them in separate silos. Don't do that. Um, we can, I got interested in this um, artifact. Why does it take so long? I still don't have an answer. Um, I made another DAG. I had to write a talk for some reason. Um, there was a, so this DAG instead saves off two really large artifacts and then just loads them again for no apparent reason. Um, and the first one gets saved off in four seconds, but the overall runtime of the load artifact step is 20 seconds. Maybe I'm just really bad at making spans that tell you what they really mean, but I'm pretty sure I've got this one right. Um, so this is something to investigate after KubeCon. Um, so further things that we could look at, um, we can look at how, uh, how the workflow controller and the pods interact with each other. This again is down to optimizing things um, and understanding as a, as a platforms provider where the bottlenecks are. In all our previous spans, we've run with the workflow controller set to uh, a thing, there's a, a setting in there called default requeue time. Um, it's a thing that is how long between each um, time that the workflow controller wakes up and looks at the state of the world for an individual workflow before it does anything to it. So the default for that value is 10 seconds. And you can see the controller view of the world in blue and the um, pod's view of the world in green. They're two separate distributed parts of the trace. The pod started up a few seconds after the controller had created it, but the controller didn't notice this until 9.92 seconds, the second bar down. Um, that's approximately 10 seconds. It should be bigger than 10 seconds, but who knows. Um, uh, so that's expected behavior, but the overall sp time for running what is down the bottom 16 seconds worth of work was 30 seconds. So A took 30 seconds before B and C could run in this case, even though they only did 16 seconds worth of work. We could start optimizing that again. If we look even deeper into this as a workflow developer, um, I've added a load more spans and tracing in here to see uh, calls the workflow controller operate, which is the main function that gets called every time the workflow controller wants to look at the state of the world and deal with this particular workflow. And you can see a couple of calls to that. You can now see that the operate call, the first operate call, um, coincides and lines up with the point at which the pod went from pending into running up the top there. I hope that's clear. Um, that's the 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 um, reconcile arrows saying the operate thing calls us to reconcile the workflow and change the phase there. Um, down the bottom, we've got uh, the workflow pod writing out its workflow task results. If you're not sure what workflow task results are, they're the way that the pods communicate back to the controller the state of a particular pod. And then there's a 10 second delay again why do we have that delay? Could we optimize that, make it so that this is the very final thing? The workflow could have finished 10 seconds ago, but it didn't. Um, we've now got some of that tool, some of the tools to do that. Um, what next? Uh, if you'd like to play with any of this stuff, there's a GitHub link, there's two GitHub links. The top one is the workflow uh, code to do this um, called tracing base. And the, the bottom one is a um, a set of descriptions and shell scripts and everything else to set up yourself up with a K3D cluster with Grafana and Tempo and all of the stuff that you need to be able to run this. Probably, it probably doesn't work that well because it works on my machine um, and that's all the testing it's had. Oh, no, and it works on JM's machine, so we're done. Um, there's a QR code if you want to see that. Um, the aim for this is to release it in 3.7. I've got a load of questions I need to answer about that. Um, how do we control those traces? 
nobody wants to see all those workflow task result reconciliations in every workflow trace they ever see. Um, uh, which things do we want to trace? I've picked a bunch to show you some slides. Um, we'd like to be able to turn it on for this particular workflow maybe. Maybe we'd like a GUI button that turns it on in a resubmit. I had this workflow, it took forever, why is that? Press the button with a get a full trace out of it. Um, uh, and while I was writing this talk, find the um, Open Telemetry guys have uh, introduced a semantic convention for CI/CD. Feels like we should <laughs> adhere to that. I don't at all at the moment because it's only just been ratified. Um, but that would be a good thing to see how we can address that. Um, a couple of in interesting issues that came up during implementation. The open telemetry operator doesn't annotate init containers. So the load artifact step happens inside an init container and open telemetry operator just ignored that. Uh, I've got an open issue, hoping, hoping to produce a PR. I'll obviously have it working because um, I showed you it, but um, need a proper PR with good code in it rather than my bad code um, to make that work. Um, and Open Telemetry SDK, the sort of specification, not just the Golang one, I believe expects spans to start and end in a running binary. Workflows can run for days for some people, uh, hours for many people. Workflow controller could restart in that time. How can we handle that? How can we produce a useful span? Can we produce a useful span? Not sure yet. Um, I work for Pipekit, as you can tell by my big t-shirt. Um, they fund this stuff, and we know some things about workflows. Um, so if you'd like help with workflows, you come and give us a call. Uh, we've got three maintainers on our team, and pretty much anyone who knows which end of a computer to bash has done some workflow contributions, which is pretty cool. Um, and we support people with big enterprise uh, um, <laughs> installations of workflows. Um, we also have our own control plane, allowing things like better RBAC and multi-cluster. Um, so come and talk to us. We are on booth 33. Um, uh, we will also probably be around on the Project Pavilion Argo stand, so you can find us there um, with JM. And uh, we also do some office hours, um, so you can come and talk to us. Uh, outside of KubeCon if you're shy and don't like meeting people or touching people in person. Um, that's where we'll be. <laughs> if anyone has any questions, Greg. Thanks. So actually I have two. May I have two? <laughs> okay, so first one. Uh, was distributed tracing a goal for your change, or was it out, not a goal at all? Spe specific tracing. No, no, distributed tracing. Because distributed. You know, the, the, uh, the tracing that you, that you showed, it, it, show, yeah, it's, it provides you an, an insight to you know what happens you know, when your workflow was, was actually submitted. But as far as I understand, there is, you cannot actually correlate this with the submitter of the trace, or you Maybe you can or maybe you cannot correlate with the, any uh, external service calls if your work workflow has any. So, um, I'm, Yes, I was focusing on the workflows, um, a workflow created to terminated as my specific goal. You could, uh, I haven't done it yet, but introducing that as a, a remote, a, a, a partner span, I can't remember the exact term, um, I think is be a better goal because there's no immediate, um, uh, no, there isn't always an immediate um, path between the event that caused us to have a workflow within the workflow controller. Um, this is vaguely distributed because it's workflow and the pods and the workloads within the pods, but yes, I'm not trying to get that and I think we should try and solve that as a separate project getting enough information into the workflow's annotations from the sources. Some of that's there, some of that's not. At the moment, there's no tracing, and I'm not aiming to do tracing in the work Argo server. OK, thanks. And over one. Um, so you mentioned you know, the, the metrics as well. Uh, did you run into the problem of metrics cardinality at all? 
that's why we mentioned that some people might be getting rich out of this. Um, there, is, there is a big problem with cardinality if you try and turn any of the, if you try and turn all your traces into metrics, you are going to have a massive bill. Yeah, so, um, but, so uh, most of that should be solved outside of this. You can do things like um, choosing which workflows to trace and which workflows not to trace. Um, but, and we will want to pick which elements go into a particular trace. But eventually, cardinality, if you run it, will be huge. Yeah, so, so. We, we, we did hit it, the wall with the auto collector. And we, well, so we solved it somehow with using from aggregation gateway because auto collector itself, it is not design, you know, it is not in the mission, you know, to actually aggregate uh, metrics, you know, from separate data sources, yeah, from, because, you know, each pod is an individual data source. So, yeah, so, yes, so yes. far we, we stick to the aggregation gateway. I would expect us to do some filtering and, and some aggregation in the collector, etc. Thanks. All right, we're out of time. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Go on, Bala. <laughs> hey, it's the last question. Hey, thanks. It's a very good. I have only one question. How we are going to support the multi-controller environment? The multi? Controller environment? Um, they will all deliver through their own collector with their own attributes identifying which controller they came from. So you can then aggregate or not aggregate depending on what you care about. So okay. yeah, okay. that will work.